Hello everybody and welcome to part four of this special series on the mechanisms of obesity. Now we're going to talk about body fat storage and distribution so let's get straight into it. Uh, essentially you can see two uh, images here on the screen. You can see what we call an apple shaped person in terms of their body shape where the fat is deposited around their abdomen. Okay so it's a, 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 a basically uh, in the very center of their body and it's fat accumulation which is in the abdominal area. And if you think back to the first video I was talking about uh, this type of fat, the visceral fat being the most harmful because you've got all of those adipocytes releasing those uh, adipokines into uh, the, you know, the liver and the renal system, uh, causing direct damage and damage elsewhere in the body. Uh, if you have central android obesity, so a lot of your fat deposited around your, uh, your belly, you're going to have a greater risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancer as well. It's more common in fe in males, sorry, rather than females. Okay, so males generally tend to have more of this uh, central android obesity. Now there is another form of obesity which is called peripheral gynoid obesity. So we can see from the name peripheral the fat is not going to be centrally located, it's going to be located around the thighs, uh, the hips and the buttocks as well uh, and it's basically less risk of illness uh, compared to android obesity because you haven't got that fat deposited around the organs, it's actually in places where uh, you know, you, you don't have the organs, of course, uh, so there's much less risk of you actually having damage to uh, to particular organs. It's more common in females. It's that typical hourglass figure that you see uh, in females. Uh, and if, if you are going to have obesity, this is probably the most favorable type to have, although re in reality, you want to make sure that you have a, uh, a healthy weight and you don't carry uh, any surplus uh, fat. Now you can measure this if you you know you can measure this yourself at home as well. So you can use uh, waist circumference. So you literally just take uh, you know a, a measurement of your waist using a tape measure, and there's certain cutoffs. So if you're greater than 102 centimeters, then that would indicate central obesity, uh, and it's 88 greater than 88 centimeters in women. Or you could calculate the waist to hip ratio, okay? And then uh, essentially with that, you just measure your waist at the narrowest point. You measure your hips at just at the top of the iliac crest, top of the kind of uh, uh, by the hip bone or uh, near near that kind of pubic area. Um, you, you take those two readings, uh, you divide the waist by the hips and you'll get a ratio, okay? Now if your ratio, ratio is um, a greater than 0 0.9 if you're a male uh, or greater than 0 0.85 if you're a female, then you're at greater risk of having um, central obesity and you really want to get yourself onto a, uh, a, a lifestyle program to try and address that as, as soon as you, as you can. So these are just some slang terms that you might come across for uh, central android obesity, muffin top, spare tire, uh, beer belly, love handles, this is the kind of visual illustration. So if you're looking like this, then this is this is an area where you know you need to think about addressing uh, in terms of behavior change and uh, some intervention to try and move out of this uh, period because on the surface you look like this, but internally you'll look like this. Okay, so you'll have all of that uh, fat, the white that you can see in this uh, uh, illustration here is actually fat adipocyte cells. Those adipocytes, remember, as they get larger, they become ne necrosed, they die, and those dead cells release all manner of harmful chemicals, which gets into the circulation and can and attack other parts of the body, particularly the heart. Okay, so this was the most important um, take home message that I wanted you to think about, um, particularly those individuals that work with patient populations as well. So if you do work in a rehabilitation setting and you have obese individuals coming into your clinic, um, then it's very important for you to kind of illustrate some of these concepts in a, in a way that will be um, uh, impactful but also positive so that they can take this information and actually make some positive behavior changes. So that's all for this section. Uh, the next part will discuss some interventions that we can implement to try and reduce adiposity and, and get out of obesity. Stick around for that.